Hello, and welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, amidst the enormously oppressive drought that has been afflicting much of the western U.S., amidst this particular drought, combined with uh, the multi-year effects over the last uh, couple decades, prolonged effects, the enormous reservoir Lake Powell, along with its downriver neighbor next to Las Vegas, the even bigger reservoir Lake Mead, they are now no longer just near uh, record low water levels, they now both have actually uh, gone below what their former records were and have uh, reached their lowest levels in history since they were uh, both first filled. The one the video is titled after Lake Powell. Lake Powell is this one here in uh, satellite photos. Unfortunately for Lake Powell, they're all still from 2016. And Lake Powell is a huge reservoir in uh, South Utah. And its uh, general purpose, Lake Powell serves as excess water storage to uh, to release when needed, which in present times has been constantly uh, to release extra water from its storage when needed to flow downriver to allow for Lake Mead to also do the same without dropping too quickly, even though Lake Mead has still been dropping too quickly anyways, so that uh, the Colorado River itself along the border of Arizona and California and the smaller reservoirs along that border uh, that its supplies can be kept at a decent level to supply the Colorado River aqueduct system, which sucks water out of the uh, Colorado River to pump that water over to Los Angeles and uh, throughout Southern California. Well, as the years have gone on over the last two and a half decades or so, both reservoirs have gone through their uh, their yearly or seasonal cycles based on rainfall seasons and snow melt and everything. They go through periods in the year where they regain water level and then periods where they lose more water level. Over time, both of them have uh, been consistently, in totality, losing more than they regain each time. And in cumulative total, they've both now lost uh, about 150 feet. With Lake Powell, the namesake of the episode, uh, dropping from where its full level would be uh, way back when it was full at about 3,700 uh, feet of elevation above sea level, as that's how the uh, the lakes in the U.S. get measured. That's not the depth of the lake, it's how high the, uh, the surface of the water is above sea level at any given point. And if full, Lake Powell would be at 3,700, and as of uh, today, it's all the way down to 3,552, and Lake Mead has gone down a similar path. If full, it would be at about 1,225 or 1,230, and in present day, it is now down to under 1,068. And in terms of its depth, at its deepest point, Lake Powell uh, is about uh, over 500 feet deep at least. In elevation uh, level, a bit under 3,200. So the numbers deceptively uh, would make one think. All right, it's uh, about uh, or a bit over 500 feet deep, and it's lost about 150 feet of water level. So 350 is out of 500, that sounds like 30%. So it should be down to 70% full. Uh, no, unfortunately, that is not the case. Even though it seems to have only lost 150 feet of water level, it's actually already down to only 32% full. How could that actually be? Well, because for one, lakes and reservoirs are not, uh, they're not swimming pools. They're not, you know, these perfect rectangular pits. They are filled, flooded uh, dips and depressions in the landscape. They get narrower and narrower, uh, typically the further down you go. And as you can see, in the case of both Lake Powell and Lake Mead, uh, they're they're awkwardly shaped. Uh, they have like arms and uh, different sections that go out different places. And if you look at the differing uh, depths, then you'll end up finding out that the, uh, the lake bed like rises up or drops down in uh, different areas and different segments and really only the uh, the central uh, the really thin central canyon particularly the area right behind the dam uh, typically only that section is actually uh, as deep as the lake depth is listed as like for example in the case of uh, the now infamous Lake Orville over in California whose uh, hydroelectric dam had to shut down. There are still a couple hundred feet of water level in Lake Orville. However, most of that is in percentage-wise a very small area of the lake, 
uh, mostly just behind the dam in that immediate area, whereas most of its uh, different sections and arms reaching out in different directions, uh, most of those are dry and empty. And so once you get so low that uh, you're nearing the bottom of like uh, many of many of the wider sections, and you're then you're reduced down to just like the uh, the central channel of sorts. And so once you're down to like the uh, the main snaking canyon, then yeah, that section's 500 feet deep, but it's only say like a thousand feet wide. So the really deep sections, uh, volumetrically, just do not hold anywhere near that much water. And it's basically the same story with Lake Mead. Uh, Lake Mead's still a little bit more full. Instead of down to 32%, it's down to a bit higher at uh, 35%. But yeah, that's the uh, present state of the situation and the uh, how, what, and why. So hopefully just a quick information thing. Either way, thanks for sticking around and listening, everybody. Like if you enjoy, subscribe if you haven't already, usual stuff. I do episodes about other things as well, energy, mining, resources, everything. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. But that's it for this time. So may God bless, protect, and save all of you. And grants rain to those who need it. And I will see you all around next time.